Some experts say when an economy is booming, then the right thing is being done. The different sectors of the economy must pull together as a mono economy will continue to fail the nation. Nigeria, Africa's largest economy, like other leading economies of the world, is still grappling with the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. However, the federal government is gradually opening up aspects of the economy after the lockdown. The question now is, what should be the plan for each sector? That is our focus on this episode of Business 24. Is this the time for financial inclusion to be brought to bear? Reactions from Nigerians are also part of our lineup on this edition. Besides, Business 24 will also take a look at exports and how best to make it vibrant. Welcome to Business 24 on NTA News 24, a business magazine program where we analyze major issues in finance, exports, imports, and other global aspects of business. Other segments like the export tips and capital market review will equally be featured. I am Victor Azu. Now that the economy is shaping up again, those who manage it deserve commendation, but there is still need for contributions from experts. Now this report by Kunle Adeyeye focuses on how certain aspects should fare. It's been survival of the features for most businesses in Nigeria, especially those privately owned and some who depend on daily wages for survival. This is occasioned by the five-week lockdown imposed by the federal government to contain the spread of COVID-19, which took the whole world by storm. Even those exempted from the lockdown felt the heat. In the process, jobs were lost and businesses folded while some grappled for survival online. In order to strike a balance between saving lives and saving livelihoods, the government is gradually easing the lockdown and normal life is returning. The economy is shaping up with different policies introduced and steps taken almost immediately to back them up. Economic experts have said reopening the economy is a good decision, but certain things must still be done to complement the efforts of government. An investment promotion and economic development expert, Oguna Okuku, wants a shift in the manufacturing sector. He emphasized that a productive economy stands the chance to address many economic challenges. Now, oil is no more, as far as I am concerned, and the whole world knows that oil is selling at a very ridiculous price at this point in time. There has to be a direct focus or refocusing of the economy from oil to manufacturing, and if you must do that, there has to be your your raw material supply strategy has to be watertight it has to be properly aligned with the industrial revolution that has to happen within the next six seven months and then uh, uh, technology acquisition you know that is sector specific technology acquisition that will be required there has to be proper indexing of 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 countries you know, that's the country-to-country -country discussions towards how we can have leverage on relationships, you know, diplomatic, diplomatic relationships with some of these countries to bring in machineries to help support this industrialization. I'm talking about raw material because 60 to 70 percent of the manufactured goods in Nigeria still source their raw material outside. Amidst any circumstance, some sectors like transportation become inevitable to keep an economy running. The principal role of transportation is to facilitate access to different locations for individuals and goods. Inadequate transport investments can hold back economic development. In countries with development potential, transport investment facilitates economic growth. Not only in Nigeria, all over the world, transportation is the key factor the movement of goods and services as well as persons across every sphere. So Nigeria is not an exception. Across the country, um, we own the trucks that move petroleum products, goods and services, buses, some commuter services. Our members own them and they give the service. And by that virtue, 
they employ a hell lot of people in the country. We are among the major uh, employers of people in the country. And of course, uh, this COVID, by its nature, affects us much more than you will imagine. That is not an exception. This is a worldwide issue. And uh, of course, if we take you from other, if I even developed countries, we are developing probably, but developed countries have done a lot of measures to ensure um, that post-COVID, the economy moves on. Such measures are palliative assistance to the people operating the economy. One sector has constantly been on the spotlight since 2015, based on the attention given to it by the federal government, is agriculture. Despite many achievements, agriculture is one sector that is craving for more investments, given its place in the diversification drive of the federal government. So, when they are pro providing in the budget, they should do less of uh, exotic infrastructure and go down to economic infrastructure. First, when you are locating projects, budget by the Federal Ministry of Finance, they should go f much to agriculture, second to water resources development, third to ministries and departments that are going to add value to the economy and generate, since oil is no more going to be important. One part that I have gone to discover after two, over two decades in the uh, legislature is that the, we in the legislature have gotten our knees on the neck of the river basin authorities so that the river basin authorities no more do the job of improving and engaging in agriculture that it was, it was initially set up to do. We domicile the constituency project in the ministries in the river basin authorities which are nearer in our opinion to the uh, executing point and they are easier to relate with than the ministries in the federal capital in, the, in Abuja. Therefore, the managing directors and the management and the executive management of the river basin authorities now engage more in the execution and implementation of the project, constituency project that are domiciled by the legislators and they leave the core functions of the river basin authorities which was to engage in farming Get, take advantage of the basin, go into rice, go into maize, go into cassava, improve the uh, local lives of the, uh, of the areas. From manufacturing to transportation and agriculture, these are some sectors developing economies must not joke with. Financial inclusion is the availability and equality of opportunities to access financial services. It refers to a process by which individuals and businesses can access appropriate, affordable and timely financial products and services. Now these include banking, loans, equity and insurance products. What is the importance of this to Nigeria's economy? The only way and as an ordinary individual can seek a fund for a fund is just through the bank, either through the account, either the business they must have transacted with the bank earlier in the past. Uh, at least that one will be enable, enable them to give more trust on the person before giving them access to either for a loan. But the government supposed to also have given a financial assistance to the bank in such a way that they can make it easier for a common individual to assess loan at a low rate. In such that, not that when you collect a loan, at the end of the day, you end up working for the bank, not for yourself. Now, there are some people now, like, if they wanted to collect a loan, they will see 20% in interest. At the end of the day, when you do that, as in, what will you get at the end of the day? Not to talk of even paying the odds, 20%. That meaning that we are, you are enslaving yourself to the person you collected the loan, regardless of whom the person, whether the bankers or any other person. So, if they can channel the way, as in that money, to, through the bank, through a low rate, what access? I think that would be better for the whole uh, for the whole of everybody. That is, the bank is the easiest way of getting the loan, making it accessible to a common individual without nothing, without not passing through a stress, either paying some money before you can even get a form and all those things. That is what makes people running away. Before you talk about insurance, you must have gotten something before you insure it. Uh, if you have not gotten, what are you insuring? 
So let them get the money first before talking about insurance. It's to take financial services to the rural area. The use of uh, POS is a, um, is a good approach to it because um, most banks are not willing to go to rural uh, places. So uh, the deployment of POS to rural places will help. But if the bank can afford to take banking services to the rural dwellers, it will make it easier for every and sundry to access financial services. CBN should try to reduce the charges, I mean to direct commercial banks to reduce the service charges they charge. That will make it more attractive. A, situation, a, a, a good scenario is a case of some commercial banks, I wouldn't want to mention their names, they have been uh, charging stamp duty, uh, stamp duty. They have been charging people, a lot of people have heard from friends and relatives. They have been complaining about, st about stamp duty. I think they need to direct the commercial banks to reduce their level of charges, to make banking services attractive to people. If I want to, if I want to bank and uh, they reduce the interest rate or the charges there by whenever I withdraw, I think it will make it more attractive. But a situation whereby I'm being charged very high, it would discourage me from going to, I mean, to bank, I mean, to deposit my money in commercial banks or carry, I mean, using any of these uh, means. If we have to make financial inclus inclus inclusiveness effective, uh, there has to be a robust system in place, okay, whereby uh, private holdings and uh, corporate bodies or, you know, unions can have a, a common pause and uh, with their membership also uh, spreading around the, you know where you can get details of every member's member okay to be able to release your phone to them is that not so you 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 need you, without collateral without collateral you're you're being a member of a uh, of a club or association uh, can enable you to trust the people because you know them down to their uh, residences and their workplaces and all of that because if we cannot uh, exercise such a trust okay there is no way uh, a large number of people can be affected uh, those who need money to do or run small businesses uh, so I think that is the way I look at it government can encourage that private organizations can equally do that and individuals on their own can form cooperatives and all of that so that uh, they can pull resources together and they can also apply for funds from uh, commercial banks and uh, specialized banks like uh, Bank of Agriculture, Bank of uh, Industry and so on for commercial uh, activities. You know, first and foremost, you have to clear the mentality of people. People have the wrong idea about insurance. So when you are telling them about insurance, they don't see it as something that is necessary. Imagine telling somebody that, come and insure your business. And the person now asks, what does it mean? He says, we are going to help you to protect your business, do like this. And the guy takes a look at it and I say, okay, what will it cost me? And I said, every month you'll be bringing 10,000 10, Naira. As far as that guy is concerned, that 10,000 Naira is a waste to him. So it, it has to really come down to these insurance and companies or corporations to really explain that, look at it, these are the insurance runs. If your business collapses like this, these are we are going to come up again. Then also, what people also are having problem with is that, how are they going to have these claims? Because most of the time, some of these insurance organizations, when they are marketing, they will not tell you the real policies and hidden agenda at the end of the policy. It is only when insurance comes up, they will not say, no, you didn't insure this, you didn't do like this, you have to do like this, you have to bring documents. So if the process of claim is also very difficult, it will discourage people from doing insurance. Then also, one of the ways insurance can work also is to partner with certain organizations. Life is gradually returning to countries badly hit by COVID-19 and governments have begun easing lockdown and opening up for business. Exports of goods will equally commence in earnest. Here are some valuable tips 
you will need for experts. In Nigeria today, exporting is the best way to go. Because, I want to say because we are committed to it. The government is committed to it. Remember now that the oil price is going down. So, in some, some other countries, the, even they export oil, uh, the oil is no longer the attraction. It's non-oil. And the, the government, particularly the Export Promotion Council, we have made exporting so easy in terms of, you know, the processes. For example, our, our, if you want to research an exporter, you don't need to come to our office. In your comfort of your home, you can even register with us, you know, and we take you to trade fairs where you can also see, the, assess the market, you know, and because the market is key to what you are producing. Whatever you are producing, the market is supposed to determine what you do. So, so that's why we take people to trade fairs to make sure that they see what is there and also look for potentials for, I mean, look for possible buyers. So, and uh, we also have related, uh, I mean, sister agencies, Nexim, who provide the funding, you know, we have the NIPC for investment, we have, so the process is, is seamless. Nigeria has about 22 products that can easily be exported, developed and exported. And that's 22 products, is, is to two, what we call the category A and category B. Category A are the products that can generate, that, that are traded globally, about 20 billion dollars globally. And we say if we can get 5% of this product, of this value, we can, we can confidently, by the time we add all, we can able to even compete with oil. And that is how we got that 20, uh, we have the 10, 11 category, and the, and the category B. Category B are products that we have comparative advantage. Naturally, God has given us that advantage. For example, ginger. Nigeria is top third in the world today. In fact, our ginger is the best in the world in terms of aroma, you know, and uh, other properties it has. You know, cashew nut. Our export of ginger, I mean of uh, cashew, was less than 50,000 metric tons per annum. That's what it was. But today we are doing 350,000 metric tons. So you can see that potential is there. So those are natural, the one God has given opportunity, I mean, given us the advantage too. So those are kind of things. Those are the plans zeroed on the fact that we can make money out of non-oil product if we are. If, if we put acts together. Just like I was telling you about the potential of Nigeria in terms of food production, size is one of them. And today we are proud to say that Nigeria, Nigerians has so much, so, done so much in terms of spices. Yes, many of entrepreneurs who are under our database, they have done so much. And so we are now exporting spices in, in branded forms, spices in package, spices in different format, you know, um, uh, grinded spices, uh, you, know, you know, a lot of package, well packaged spices, you know, in different sizes, even in bulk and retail. So there's high demand. I remember that uh, we're saying, like, for example, in the Middle East, uh, there's a lot of spice. In Asia, there's a lot of spice. But in the Middle East, because of the, the deficiency in food production, they are looking for spice from every part of the world. And so Nigeria, is, when it comes to Africa, Nigeria is the number one destination for spice. I begin to say, okay, let's take the major ones. In fact, that might not be where the potential is. We have been exporting cocoa the last uh, 60 years. We are exporting uh, palm oil, palm product. We are exporting cotton. Those are not where the potential is. The potential is where we are talking about dead palm, tiger nut, coconut. Those are, these are according to niche products or niche market because there you are just adding value. And in fact, you have the asset. Because if I'm talking of cocoa, now before I talk of cocoa, the person in London knows the price of cocoa. In fact, they are the one determining the price. You understand? If I'm talking of uh, whatever product I talk, but if I'm doing dead palm, <laughs> no, it's only me that knows the price. And I'm determining what the price will look like. So that is an area we're looking So a lot of things, and that's why the present uh, position we are right now, our safest thing is to go on those products, those pro according to semi, uh, semi-traditional products. They are not tra semi-traditional, I call them imagined products. They are imagined because that's the area, for example, Coconut is a wonderful crop right now. Some countries, especially in the Asian countries, in the Philippines, we see how much they get from coconut production. When I'm talking coconut, the value chain, we're talking about raw coconut, transfer into coconut, uh, coconut powder, coconut milk, coconut cream, coconut oil, you know, a lot of things around it. And so they're making a lot of money. 
And that's the kind of potential we have. Just deadpan we are talking today. The deadpan, before you know it, people will get even oil from deadpan. Like Moringa, people are getting Moringa oil. Moringa, you know. So, so that's, and that is the, the high value end of the product where you make money. It's just a simple thing. You know, for example, ginger. We have the ginger oil. It just is, you know, one millimeter or so. I mean, one uh, something small bottle of ginger, uh, ginger oil. So expensive, you know. So that is actually where the, the, the money is right now. So, and I encourage SMEs and entrepreneurs to go to that, to just move into that value chain, you know, where the money is. Next is a capital market review for the week. Beginning with the previous week, um, you will recall that um, the stock market in particular um, gained. The stock market gained 0.67% um, um, for throughout last week and um, opened um, this week on, an, on a negative note, I think um, about 0.99%. Um, and what has happened today, you know, Friday, uh, is that the market, um, as uh, the all-share index uh, depreciated by 0.42 percent so what that um, implies um, it would appear that um, uh, for this week investors um, resorted to you know taking profits um, the market gained previous week this week we are now seeing um, a plunge um, in, in, in market um, performance so uh, it goes to show that um, investors were, were largely you know um, Taking profit, so the the apart from on Wednesday, when the market appreciated by I think 0.17 percent, every other day uh, throughout this week has been in the, in the red, uh, beginning you know um, uh, from Monday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and again today we've seen the market um, you know going down. So as I said, um, it is simply a pointer uh, to the fact that um, um, you know. The market sentiment is still negative, um, you know, sub substantially, and uh, investors too would appear to be uh, taking flight to assets, asset classes they consider a lot safe or they consider safer. Uh, because if you look at what is happening in the uh, fixed income markets, uh, especially the bond market, you will find that um, demand there, you know, is uh, um, a lot quite strong. Uh, the Federal government bonds that um, uh, you know were issued uh, this week were you know completely oversubscribed. So that tells you that the demand you know um, is strong there. And again, that is because bonds, of course, are considered um, risk-free and um, uh, safer, much safer, you know, superior securities in relation to um, equities. So investors are, are are doing bonds now more of. Um, uh, equities. Okay. You also look at the 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 investor category. Those who are playing the part in the uh, stock markets, you find out that there are many domestic investors. Uh, again, judging from the NSE's um, report, even for that of May, which is the latest on their on their website, NSE's um, um, you know domestic and foreign uh, portfolio investors um, in the Nigerian stock markets. The domestic investors' um, uh, transactions, you know, were more than that of uh, foreign investors in the month of May. So we will see that um, even in this month, we will see significant um, presence of um, domestic investors. Other markets have um, experienced um, huge and bigger uh, losses, but I think I believe that um, going forward, with the uh, stimulus packages, the government. Um, you know, have rolled out with interventions by the government and the CBN. Uh, that should uh, stimulate the economy, you know, oil the economy well enough for the impact to, to be positively felt on the um, stock market. So going forward, I want to believe that um, the loss we're experiencing now will be eroded, completely eroded, and the market will, um, you know, um, turn positive um, you know, once again. Indeed. 
If you are thinking of where to promote your business, think Business 24. And it's a wrap on this week's episode. You can always join the conversation via our social media handles and let's promote your business on the next episode of Business 24. I am Victor Azul. See you next time.